What's going on guys? Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great day. So today's episode, what we've got to do is take this GX390 pull start and convert it to electric start. We've got everything in this box to do so. So let's get started. I'm gonna open up this box. I haven't opened it yet. There should be inside of here a starter, a key switch, and a flywheel. Got our flywheel. Came with a key, which we're not gonna use. A little bracket, a tie, tie back, charging coil, and some hardware. I'll leave a link in the description on where I purchased this from. It was pretty cheap, it was like 75 bucks. The packaging definitely could have been better. Horrible packaging, but whatever. It is what it is. Nice. So we got a starter with a solenoid. Very cool which I'm not gonna use, but I'll show you how, how this is used because we're doing a ignition switch on the column in the Samurai golf cart, but that's irrelevant. Again, we'll show you how to hook this up, it's pretty easy. First thing what we're gonna need to do is, you're gonna need some angled needle nose pliers, pull back this spring clamp, take your fuel line off. Now's a good time to inspect it a lot of times when you pull these off, they dry rot and they come apart and they'll be leaking. So mine looks good. Two 10 millimeter nuts. We got to get the air cleaner off because we have a bracket on the back side. All right, we got our cleaner off. Now you've got a 10 millimeter right here. 10 millimeter right here. That's gotta come off. My apologies for the shaking. Now our carb. You gotta be careful because your linkage for your throttle is connected to it. Should just slide right off. Yes. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull this out of the way. We're gonna twist and remove our linkage. Our spring. Now we got our carb off. Set that to the side. We've got five 10 millimeter bolts. Number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Open up our clamp, get our wires out, and now we're gonna disconnect. Let's set this off to the side, our pull start. Now we've got to get our flywheel off. For this we're going to need a 24 millimeter. We're going to set this off to the side. We're going to remove our coil. Just put a little pressure on it. Use my mallet and tap the flywheel to pop the flywheel off. All right, so all I'm doing is putting a little bit of pressure between the flywheel and the engine block. Just tap, give it a few love taps. And there we go. That was actually a lot easier than I expected. Bam, there's our flywheel. <clears throat> so now is a great time. This is actually a really important, important step. I'm going to pull the camera down. 
we need to verify that our keyway and our magnet is in the same location. All right, so this is our, our old flywheel. This is our new flywheel. We're gonna put our keyway at 12 o'clock. We're gonna put our keyway at 12 o'clock and our uh, pickup should be roughly one o'clock, which this one is and this one is. So we're good. Now the fun part. What we need to do is we've got to take a hole saw and cut this chunk of aluminum out so the starter can fit through there. What we need to do is, is take a two and a half inch hole saw and we're going to need to drill this aluminum out. But before we do, take an eighth inch bit and we're going to drill out the center of this. The bevel the back side of this. So <clears throat> off camera I had to use my angle grinder with a round sanding wheel and just gently open the hole up a little bit for the starter to fit in because the problem is, is if you don't have a exact size for this, which this is not two and a half inches, it's slightly larger, your starter won't fit inside of it. So you'll have to just round out the hole a little bit. <clears throat> and now our starter fits it's nicey nice inside of here. These are <clears throat> 12 millimeter. And again, I'm just snugging it up because I want to, I just want to check something real quick to see that the starter is seated all the way in. Our starter is seated all the way in. And we're going to add, torque this down to 15 inch pounds. There we go. I don't know what it was because there was no instructions. So uh, I'm just definitely a great idea to get you some Loctite, put them on the threads. These motors vibrate like nobody's business. And last thing I want is this thing coming undone. Put you a dab of red Loctite. So these are the bolts they come with the kit. They're too short. You're gonna want a few mils longer, like so. These are SeaDoo um, supercharger bolts. I'm going to use these because I am absolutely not sticking them, them in there. Those are way too short. And tighten this one just to hold it for a second. And I want to put some Loctite on these. I absolutely do not trust. And we're going to just snug them down evenly. Some Loctite on the threads. Okay. Now is absolutely a good time to make sure nothing's hitting. All right, I like it. So there's a dot on the, the fins, the air fins, the cooling fins. And there's a dot right here that's got to go. Go on like so. There we go.
Get our coil back on. We're going to set our gap. Check the top. Nicey nice. Beautiful. Check our bottom. Nicey nice. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and put our pull start cover back on. And I'm going to tighten them up by hand. Sorry about that. One, two, three. So we've got a couple of 10 millimeter bolts that are going to go in up here. One up top. One in the middle. Let's snug our tens. You got one here. You've got one here and that's all it does is it basically just holds it holds this uh, key switch on. So we're gonna put the carburetor on, put our spring in. Install our control. You're gonna hold in your your air box. Let's give this a little love tap. Nice, nice. Put our spring clamp on. Install our filter. Oh, we're going to need a new filter. Definitely going to need a new filter. I'm replacing this. I'm not, I'm not firing the engine up. I'm just reassembling it for right now. One for the cover. That's it. We're done. Hook up a few wires and this thing is done though. So all we've got left is a few, few wires you've got to hook up. Okay, this is our low oil. Okay, we've got our ground for ignition kill. We've got the other side of our ground for the ignition kill. Then we've got our charging coil which is going to go here. Then we've got our switched ignition switch to make the starter work, which is going to go here. And then you've got 12 volt constant for your key. So we're going to put this on right here. All right, we're going to clean up and we'll be right back. I just want to point something out. I had a couple of issues just now getting the starter to line up with the flywheel. So I had to take it apart, put it back together, take it apart, put it back together. Finally, I got the starter, I believe, sitted in the correct groove because now, now it works. So, but before the teeth on the starter were binding up onto the flywheel and locking the flywheel up. So, now I've got to reassemble everything. Something you're going to want to pay attention to, absolutely, if you do this uh, conversion, set it up on a bench and test it like I'm testing it. Verify your starter is working. Otherwise, you're going to put it all back together. You're going to put it in your you know, uh, pressure washer or whatever you're using it in generator, and it's not going to work. So life is good. Overall, it really wasn't a pain in the butt to assemble all this. Uh, the hardest thing about doing this conversion, like I said, was the line in the starter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wouldn't mind, comment down below. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.